brings about a lot of excitement, but also a layer of fear. And so with that, I want to bring in uh, investigative reporter Mario Diaz. Mario, I know uh, you are a parent. I you am. can relate to these emotions, these feelings. Yes. All too much, all too well. You know, and, and it's obviously something that when we were growing up, we were so excited about the first day of school. And you still want that excitement for your child. And as a parent, mm -hmm. you want to be happy that they're going back to school, that they're happy. Some of them aren't, of course. And you can't show that, that concern. No, and you have to be careful with that. Yeah. But it's okay to ask the questions because you want to make sure that everything's in place. And I've spoken to so many law enforcement experts that say, you know, you want to ask the questions out there. And one of the things we're examining tonight is a situation that we have seen in Texas for decades. In fact, I was taught inside of one of these. I'm talking about portable classrooms, but when I was a kid, we called them trailers. Trailers, hey, you're yes. Taking, you're taking computer science out of the trailers. Out Lake Jackson Intermediate. That's so before we get into this conversation, I want to talk about this. Uh, about a month ago, I think it was, we all came together, producers, reporters, right. anchors, managers, and we talked about just this, classroom ready, getting you ready to go back to school. And this was something you brought up. You brought up safety when it comes to portable classrooms. Being from the north, we don't have what you call portable classrooms. If there is a portable structure like that, a trailer like that. It's because the school is under construction and it's temporary. Right. They're not permanent. They're right. not permanent structures. So for people, you know, not familiar with portable classrooms, these are permanent structures on these campuses. They are. And up north, it's different. And there's a real simple reason for that. Up north has been established for many years, for decades. You're not seeing an influx of people going right. to northern states, yeah. to the northeast. It's the opposite. They're all coming down into Texas. It's been that way for decades now. And yes, you did have trailers established here in the 70s and 80s, 90s, last decades or so, last few of them. Uh, and as I indicated, I remember being taught inside of one of these in Lake Jackson when I was mm -hmm. at the old Lake Jackson Intermediate. Here's the deal. They're sold as temporary structures. Everyone believes they're going to be temporary structures. However, because of the population boom that we've seen here for the last few decades, they are kept in place for quite some time. We are seeing some school districts now who are cutting back. I can tell you that, in fact, at my son's school, he was taught in a trailer last year, but that trailer's now gone this year. They're getting is, rid of them. Which is a great sign. Yeah. But the issue that I wanted to examine again is an issue that we examined in 2018. How safe are these trailers, Zach? And the reason why is because a trailer is completely built differently mm -hmm. than a brick and mortar school. When you have a brick and mortar school. Starting with the foundation. Absolutely. Right. But when you have a brick and mortar school, you have bricks, you have concrete, you have that all built into the structure. But a trailer is very thin. It's not the most concrete Durable. of structures, yeah. right? So, and that's been an, a concern that law enforcement has, has had for quite some time because a bullet or a round can penetrate very easily through these buildings. So we examined that. We talked with officials about what can be done differently. We talked with law enforcement about what kind of questions you should be asking your school if, they're, if your child is inside a portable trailer. Again, we want you to be excited about the school year. This is just the, this is the times that we live in. Parents have these questions and they ask these questions. Yeah. And school districts now are prepared to answer them as best as possible. Fact of the matter is school districts, they don't like the trailers. Right. Because it isolates mm -hmm. the child from the school. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you're inside together, you're all inside of the same building. They want to have that. That community. Exactly. Yeah. Great word for it, Zach. They want to have everybody in the same room. They don't want them to feel isolated or separate or different. And you're trying to see these school districts, again, all around our area, work to get rid of these trailers. But it's not going to happen Over like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you talked about your son's school, your, your son's school district uh, getting rid of uh, these these structures, you know, I, I, is it be, what's the reason behind it? Because well, of these threats? You know, it's a great question. A lot of it has to do with the overpopulation of schools. OK, mm -hmm. so as new schools come online in certain school districts, I know this has been a case up north, north of the city. Mm -hmm. They're starting to see these population, these schools that have been just overly populated for years now. It's yeah. obviously start they're to see the numbers yeah. go down because you have another school that's able to siphon away some yeah. of those students. That's the primary reason. Yeah. Um, but keep in mind, this is an issue that they're all concerned with. Yeah. 
and we wanted to examine it. We examined it five years ago, post Santa Fe. Unfortunately, this is the reality we live in. So as you are a parent asking questions about the curriculum, there are questions that are also being asked about safety. It's only natural now, especially when you talk to law enforcement and say, hey, listen, Schools have to do this. They're walking a tightrope. They've got to balance themselves on one end with education, but they also have to balance themselves with, in terms of security on the other end. And the school districts, the big challenge for them is the financing. Yeah. yeah. You've got to have the money. And that's the, also the challenge with this. When we talk about these portable classrooms, I don't mean to be ignorant by any means. I, I'm just not familiar with it. Are they broken up into grade levels? Like when you, when you have one portable unit, right. what's in that unit? What's in the next unit? So you have, you have different grade levels in different port, in, inside different portable trailers. What was interesting in 2018 when we first examined this, okay? Zach, you're right here. Just imagine if you're right there, okay? I was able to literally walk up to a trailer at a school in Fort Bend County, right up to the trailer along with my photographer. If we wanted to, we stayed on the sidewalk. There was nothing around the trailer. No perimeter of, oh yeah. So you have this very thin material of construction as we examined and as we showcased back then, just being completely unprotected. Now, all schools have fencing around yeah. them, which is a great addition. Yeah. But as we've heard from individuals, especially from the teachers union, anybody can hop a fence. Yeah. Anybody can get right over the fence. What I saw in our investigations this time around is that we went to various school districts, various campuses. You saw in most cases the trailer being far away from the school. Again, you're the school, you saw the trailer being yeah. back over here behind the school. Still on campus. Cases. Still on campus. Yeah. However, there are some more established schools where the trailer is literally right beside the street. Yeah. And anybody can just get right over if they wanted to. Yeah. That's the challenge. And law enforcement is thinking about that. Law enforcement has ideas of what needs to be done. Ideally, you fortify a school in terms of a portable classroom to where it's virtually bulletproof. Can it be done? Yeah. Yes, there are companies out there that are able to make it as safe as possible. You want to make sure the door jams are there. You want to make sure that there's really no glass. Yeah. But now you have all glass on the first floor has to have that window film in the state of Texas to prevent any kind of round that can get through and shatter it. So it can be done. But again, it comes down to what? Yeah. Money, 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 money. Okay, this so. is one of many layers. And then you have weather. When I think of these portable, these units, I think of also weather. <laughs> right, too. you're right, right. I mean, you area. talk to a meteorologist, they'll tell right. you one of the most dangerous places to be inside of. A mobile during, home, a is, trailer. Exactly, a during a, a, because yeah. the foundation just isn't there. The construction just isn't there. They're serving a purpose. They're serving a need. My son thrived inside of a portable trailer. Yeah. He had his yeah. best school year last year. Of course. Year. So they're still being yeah. taught. They're still having great memories. It's the outside factors that, again, unfortunately, because of the times, we have to examine beforehand because yeah. the last thing you want to do is say, hey, well, yeah. why wasn't anybody talking After about it? Fact. Exactly. Yeah. What time does the report uh, Six o'clock tonight. We have this report coming up at six o'clock. You can see between now and then, you can go back in time. You can look for our old story. It was in 2018. And you're going to see the, uh, the salesperson at the time from a modular, they're called modular portables, right? modular buildings, right? But at the end of the day, it's like we said, they're trailers. Yeah. So, um, and he's up there knocking. He says, yeah, this just can't, it can't hold. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, mister, six o'clock tonight. Right. You're back though at the, uh, in this hour. Right. Getting closer to 840-ish. Okay. We're gonna be- It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. And if you don't no. know what this is, it's pop off politics. 8.25. Oh, you have less than 15 minutes. Okay. That was Sam in my ear. Yes, pop off <laughs> politics. Well, I'm glad because I was told that. Hey, but hey, Lizzie, if you have questions for us, yes. this is what you want to do, right? Yes. You want to text the word classroom to the number you see there on your screen. That's one 996 5772 